guys to another tantalizing Tuesday with Ask Marie with the Chronicles of Chocolate Sir. We'll be healing your minds, your body, and your soul. Today we have a beautiful guest in the building, Thank Jess you. B. Okay, yeah. this is a a teacher turned entrepreneur. She's yeah. gonna be with us today. Um, but we're gonna kind of review um last week and then we're gonna move forward, okay? Okay. And actually me and her was talking about, you know, um, about having healthy relationships and that is a mm-hmm. reason why she's here today actually yes. um we were saying um how the most important relationship you can have is with yourself mm-hmm. and basically what did you say what did you say about that what um your relationship with uh-huh. yourself mm-hmm. um <laughs> okay i think you were talking about that's how you became an entrepreneur oh yeah so um i kind of had to start figure out how to learn to love myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I had started, you know, with therapy mm-hmm. and all of that. And mm-hmm. so... You tell me that she said therapy, y'all. Okay, yeah, okay. So I'm, okay. A, I'm a big advocate for therapy. Okay. Um, and so through that, I kind of found power within myself. Wow. Um, I was able to identify a lot of what I was looking for in other people mm. um, and figuring out how to fill those voids within mm. me. And so, it, you know, it was a long journey, but I found... God within myself. Okay. Speak now. Yeah. She said she found God. Within myself. Within herself. Mm -hmm. And that really uh, moved me. And Mm -hmm. I knew that she was definitely somebody that we wanted to have on the show. Thank you. Um, I think that she can bring a wealth of knowledge to a lot of things. Just by inspiring us. Because you actually took the step out to say, listen, I I want more. I deserve more. And I'm going to go get it. Right. And she went and got it. Yes, ma'am. It's just that simple. Just <laughs> yeah, that simple. It is. Okay, so okay, so let's let's we, let's go rewind back a little bit. And yes, just tell ma'am. the people a little bit about you and who you are. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to kind of set the stage and let them know why I want you to be here. Okay. Because you had such great um, input on on a relationship with yourself. I was I was moved by that. Thank you. So with that being said, they know a little bit, but go ahead and just break it down to them. Okay, break it down. So. Um, from a small town, I'm sure nobody is nobody um, outside of the town has probably ever heard of it. But Renick Rapids, of course. And okay. so I grew up um, small town, grew up Christian, mm-hmm. grew up in a church, mm-hmm. and um, you know we went to a Sunday school, mm-hmm. we did the choir, we did all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but as I got older, I started to see like a disconnect between me and the church, and okay. so um, I didn't really see any examples of like what I thought love to be like in that mm, environment wow. um, and so you know I started distancing myself a little bit and of course you know as you get older you enter relationships mm-hmm. and so these relationships you know when you're young they supposed to last forever right. and so you have this idea of what you think love is based right. on what you see on TV mm-hmm. based on um, what you want mm-hmm. based on the potential it could be but mm-hmm. at the time um, of the relationship I was in the love wasn't it wasn't what I needed mm-hmm. and I didn't realize that until years and years later Okay. Um, and so you always sit back and you're like damn why let that happen right. you know, like, okay. right. how in the hell did I get here because right. You know, especially when you pride yourself on being a strong woman, on being a strong person. Absolutely. Like, you, you sit there and say, that would never be me. You mm-hmm. watch those Lifetime mm-hmm. movies and you say, oh. And be, and be talking to the screen. No, we have this. Girl, girl. So stupid. Stop. You dumb. I, 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 I could never. Okay. Right? Could never. Until you have your own story. Until you got your own story and you yes. realize and you look back on those situations. You be like, damn, that was me. Okay. <laughs> and so, you then have to make a choice. Mm-hmm. Is it going to continue to be me? Mm-hmm. Or is it going to be part of my past okay and so I woke up one day and it was like do you want to take this into your new year it was it was like wait a minute stop stop say that again sis do you want to take this into your new year wow and so am I thinking it's like a new year's resolution it was like uh it was slowly building Mm -hmm. it was slowly building Mm -hmm. and um it was just like loud it okay. was like one of those because you know when situations happen you you might take a person back you mm-hmm, might mm-hmm, you, mm-hmm. it was just like somebody yelling at me at this wow. point do you want to take this into your new year wow and i was like i can't no like no and it was the first time i had made a decision i mm-hmm. feel like that hard to 
um, distance myself from somebody who I thought I loved. Mm. And I love, I did love him at that time. I mm-hmm. loved him for what mm-hmm. I knew love to be. Mm. Because, you know, as you grow and evolve, love is going to change. Your Wait a minute. Of love. Absolutely. Absolutely. The love that you require is going to change. Absolutely. Like the love that you learn to give others is going to change. And so um, I used to beat myself up, you know, a lot about like, how did I allow this? But right. again, I, I understand now that for who that version of me was, mm-hmm. that's what I perceived love to be. Right. And so I needed that perception so that I could fix it, you mm. know, so that I could um, learn how to love myself. Okay. Because, you know, with that, you learn, well, I know I don't want that. Right. <laughs> but what parts of me allowed that? The right. parts of me that, that needed affection, you know, wow. growing up, I know like my family, we are, you know, of course we love each other, but my family isn't all that affectionate. Right. And so that's my love language. Okay. Theirs is acts of service. It might be, you know, um, affirmations, words. Mm-hmm. Mine's is physical touch, mm-hmm. quality time. Okay. And so, you know, growing up and of course parents don't necessarily know your love language because mm-hmm. back then that wasn't a priority it was right. like i just got what is, you take back then of. what is a love language like what, what, what are we talking about love, but you right. know what's interesting a lot of people don't even know what their love language their is. love language is and mm-hmm. a lot of people haven't even you know don't even know about the book so the right. book is called the five love languages you guys can look it up and and, it, and it's very instrumental on knowing who you are mm-hmm. knowing what you require and when you're um actually transitioning to knowing someone mm-hmm. even knowing what, what they, they are like. yeah. you know and what they require and right. it was interesting real quick um i just recently um started engaging with a gentleman mm-hmm. and he had read the book which mm-hmm. is very um refreshing and he knew what his love language was and mm-hmm. he was able to tell me and we had, was able to have a discussion um and he asked and i asked him i was like well what love language do you think i am mm-hmm. And he, we were able to have a healthy communication mm-hmm. about that. And, and that is something you typically don't find, number one. Mm-hmm. And for you to have that. I mean, I, I brought a book and I had brought another book um, for, at the time, my ex-husband. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he didn't really engage in it. But when I read it, I knew, you know, kind of like what I wanted mm-hmm. and how I wanted and who he was. Um, but I think it's important. So what made you decide to read that book? Um, I had... Well, you know, in college, you take kind of, you know, different courses. Yes. I had already been kind of introduced to it, but mm-hmm. it was one of those things where at the time I'm like, oh, okay. Like, I know love is love. You know, mm-hmm. you know, there's different types. I know agape. You mm-hmm. know, you love those. But it wasn't until, like I said, I started looking within where it's like, okay, I know what I like. I know what I don't like. Let me be able to express that. And so you found the book or was found it, you them. say, or was it a class? Or no, I found, um, I was introduced to the book originally in a course in college. Oh, okay. 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 Now and then, you. so it was one of those things where, you know, how you're going through stuff and it's like, take a quiz online. It was okay. like, Oh, I remember this. Yeah. I remember this context. Uh-huh. And then as an adult me now, mm-hmm. I was able to say, Oh, okay. This is who I am. This is, this explains a lot. Mm. This explains you know, why I prefer hugs. I prefer mm-hmm. like physical touch. I prefer like the little girl, like yeah, okay. that. We, we are right, right girl. Right. You're doing good, by the way. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, like that's me. Mm-hmm. I, that's how I kind of I thrive. You mm-hmm. know, like a, a flower needs water. Mm-hmm. It's like I need hugs. Mm-hmm. And and knowing that that's who I I am, I was able to kind of forgive the people who didn't give me. Okay, that. speak now. I I could forgive them because yes. they didn't know. They didn't know who who I was Mm -hmm. because at the time I didn't know Mm -hmm. and so I kind of stopped I I had to stop um I almost said blaming Mm -hmm. but I had to I had to forgive and I had to move forward from things that hurt me back Mm -hmm. then because Mm -hmm. at the time nobody knew better right and so with this different version of who I am wait a minute Speak, I'm speak constantly it. Evolving. The different version of this, who you are. Yes, my sister. Like I had to uh. look back, and even you know, with that past relationship, uh-huh. like I, I finally came to terms with it. it's like, yes, he did not love me in the way that I needed to be mm-hmm. loved, but I can't be bitter about that mm-hmm. forever. Because number one, okay, let's let's have a drum roll, please. Let's let's have a moment of silence on this right quick. Yes, because my sister, you allowed it, yes. just like. 
I allow some things. Right. And so we can sit around and say, oh, this person did this and woe right. is me. But we allow that energy to persist in our lives. Right. And like you said, when you know better, guess what? You do better. You do better. You do better. And when you know better, do. one more time for the people. You do better. You do better. Yes. When you know better, you do better. And that's yeah. what I'm all about. I'm like, you can't really transition it to, like you said, who mm-hmm. who you are supposed to be if you don't really know who you are at this present time. This time. Mm-hmm. And you can't blame somebody else for treating you bad when you allowed it. Mm-hmm. Now... I know there are circumstances when we've had um, traumatic childhoods Mm -hmm. and we've had experiences that have kept us in the dark. Mm -hmm. But the age of social media, a lot of stuff that wasn't privy to us 15 years ago, 10 years ago, you can look online and say how to love yourself. And you can start doing research, just like you're researching how to put your Mm -hmm. weave in and how you do your nails and how to meditate. All these things are online. So really, for me, if anybody's out there listening, there's no excuse. Mm -hmm. There's really no excuse on, you know... Um, trying to better yourself even if you mm-hmm. reach out to Shanika Marie because like you said therapy is important and I am a licensed therapist as mm-hmm. well as a, a energy healer a Reiki master so all of those things take um, says I take pride in myself mm-hmm. and, and who I want to become but right quick so tell yes. me but who you are though who are you what business are you because you are a business you are a, a teacher turned entrepreneur yes. so what do you do who is just be okay so I like to think of myself as a a mompreneur. Okay. Um, you know, because one of the things that I really wanted my baby to see is me being able to be a boss. Right. Um, and not just go to work uh-huh. and, and leave her at home. Because that's what I did a lot when I taught. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. You know, I was always taking care of other people's kids. And, uh-huh. you know, when uh-huh. you teach, you don't really see the fruits of your labor until right. later. And right. so, when you're in the garden, yes. it's hard. Right. <laughs> it is hard. And right. especially when I see my own child who needs my attention as mm-hmm. much as they did. Okay. So, um, I wanted to step away from teaching, um, but I also knew that I couldn't continue to keep going into a job and be treated um, with disrespect, with... Um, like just total disregard from people. Wow. So we we gonna stop right there though. We gotta yes. go take a commercial break because listen, okay. you about to get deep deep. Yeah. She said she won't go deal with the disrespect people. Right. And on seventy two point nine, the voice won't. We don't like to deal with that either. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's your girl with Ask Marie, Shanique Marie with seventy two point nine, the voice, and we will be back. Peace, peace, peace. Love. 
entrepreneur yes. listen though before we left for commercial break mm-hmm. you said something that a lot of people have to deal with in their work environment yeah. and that is this respect, respect. yeah so let's talk about that because you said that was the, the pivotal reason mm-hmm. of you transitioning mm-hmm. into um who you are now yeah and, and starting your business and and everything mm-hmm. and so well, hold up though you didn't really tell them what you do you said you are a teacher turned entrepreneur but yes. who are you what do you do though okay and then we're going to go back to because we, we're, we're we're deep in this thing but i wanted to let the people know like what do you do all right so i i own my own businesses i have two okay um the first one that i started was with it works mm-hmm. and so um it is a health and wellness company mm-hmm. so we have like over 50 different products that cater towards um weight loss skin care hair growth mm-hmm. and when i found this business where well, it found me mm-hmm. uh, my friend her name is Brooke roberts she called me and she was like hey girl i'm starting a business opportunity and i think you'd be good at it and at the time i'd only ever taught at that point so i'm like i don't know what you're doing i don't I don't want any part of this. I'm just gonna find another teaching job, and she was like, um, you, "Yeah, I'm like, I don't I want no part of this, right?" And so she was like, "You know, I'm a. I want you to think about it. I'm gonna give you seven days to think about okay. it." Okay. And so I was like, "Okay." So I had already knew I was gonna tell her no, mm-hmm. but of course, you know, with in the, my meditate. So at the time, I was also growing spiritually. Okay. And so um, I was meditating. And I was like, you know, ancestors, God, send me sign because I hated teaching. Like I was so depressed. Right. It was Ooh. I was vibrating so low. Right. And so every day I went to work, it just got worse. Wow. Every day got worse. Like it was like, no, the mark can't get no worse than this. And then it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and it I'm got like, worse. It got worse. <laughs> <laughs> on that seventh day, the day that I was, you know, she told me to check back in with it, I had already drafted up my no thanks text. And I didn't send it yet because something said don't send it. Okay, now. Went to school that day. And my third, it was my third core class. It was always turned. Like, turned to the point where it was just was like, y'all can have a room. Like, right. that's that's how it was. And so I was in there. My chest got real tight. And I was like, oh, my God. I'm having a heart attack. Right. And I hear about all those people who always die at work. Because you stress. Because I was so stressed. Absolutely. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, all I could think about was I'm, like, leaving my baby behind mm. because of other people's kids. Mm-hmm. And so I and can't take up, care of your own. And can't take somebody take, Right. Money. Barely had enough to give her. Wow. And so I ended up going to the hospital. Mm-hmm. They sent me to the hospital from work. Mm-hmm. And I got there. I was like, I'm having a heart attack. Like. Oh my God, this is crazy. Get my last little twenty dollars to my to my mama take care of my baby. And you know, the doctor was like, ma'am, this is a panic attack. And okay. I've dealt with anxiety most of my life, mm-hmm. majority of my life. But this was to another this level. This was on a whole nother level. Like I didn't been to the hospital for was panic attacks. Was you triggered attacks, by stress. stress? And so that you know, in that moment I was like, I don't ever want to feel like that again. Mm-hmm. And so he was like, Well, ma'am, how often do you feel like this? I was like, Today was intense, but this is all the time. And then I was like, um, a lot of it I think has to do with my job and he was like, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you now you need to find you a new job. Mm-hmm. And so before I was even discharged from the hospital, I text my friend Brooke and I said, Girl, go ahead and sign me up. Cause at this point what do I have to lose? Mm-hmm. I had did life Right. Right. You know, the way we grew up, go to college, get a good job. Mm-hmm. And the only thing I had got from college was stress and debt. Right. Um, okay. And she said stress, stress and the debt. Stress and the debt. <laughs> and, like, and I, you know, life wasn't what they told me it was going to be. Right. I'm a single mom. Mm-hmm. Like, never imagined that. Mm-hmm. And so, I just was like, you know what? I needed to do something different. Life is what you made it. It was what I made it. And so, when I got involved, um, now, they did say it was a Christian-based business. And I told my friend, I'm like... I I'm spiritual. Like I, 
I, you know, I don't do the church anymore. I don't do any of that. And so she was like, no, no, just come, you know, and see. And so when I got involved and I started to see the spiritual development. Oh, So okay. it wasn't. Oh, you know, church. It it's, was, they wasn't trying to change you, conform you. They just, they just love the Lord, and that's all that matters. It, and it wasn't even that. It was okay. more so spiritual, like feeding your spirit. More so, oh, you, okay, okay. your affirmations. Okay. I started affirming oh, myself. Okay. I started. I still had women, black women, because to me, black women have always been my church. Okay. And that's why I found solace. That's why I found peace. That's Mm -hmm. why I found comfort. Mm -hmm. I never found it in any other space outside of being around black women. Okay. And so finally having that, and then they were pouring into me like, oh my God, you're so amazing. Okay. You're so, you know, creative. Uh You're so, you know, great at doing this. And it was like, dang. Okay, well, I and can I started. Do this. I can do it, and I started to have a different stride. I started to have a pep in my step, mm-hmm. and the stress from work that went out the window because mm-hmm. now I'm like I got options because your your cup is being poured into it's being poured into yes. it. So now I have overflow. Yeah, and before I was just trying to squeeze just, little, just to try to get it together, to try honey. to get something and into everybody. Oh God. And, and I would be used to not having anything. Mm. And so now I got the overflow going. Mm. And not only is it pouring into me, it's pouring into my daughter. She's mm. getting that overflow. Right. And then it's pouring into other people. Which is what we're trying to accomplish. Having yeah. generational wealth, overflow. generational abundance, mm-hmm. generational love, generational self-love. Mm-hmm. Because your children watch what you do and exactly. they emulate that. And right. a lot of people, I know people understand it, but they really don't, don't. understand mm-hmm. the core of what we're doing and how we can transition ourselves mm-hmm. as well as our children's lives because that that is so important mm-hmm. because we're not going to be here mm-hmm. forever, right. you know? But they are our legacy. They are a reflection of who we are, and we mm-hmm. want that to be great. And from what you're speaking already, you are absolutely doing that, and so yeah. I applaud you. Thank yes, you. my sister. Thank and you. even with you saying that, I think that's that's so powerful. And so at that point you said you was it was overflow mm-hmm. and what happened? Um so um I started going to work. Okay. Like I said I whatever the kids was doing at that point you you could do it okay. because now I got options. Mm-hmm. And so you know I was just Telling myself I was going to wait to the end of the year and mm-hmm. then you know I was going to you know go boom in my business uh-huh. and so um I, but I also started meditating more. Uh-huh. I started, um, I watched The Secret. Okay. And that the would laws, change your life. And it did. The yeah. Laws of Attraction. So I started to change my language. Okay. I started to be more intentional about what I was doing, okay. um, where I was going, who okay. I was doing. Like, exactly. I started to be more intentional with <laughs> it all. She said, she was doing, y'all, look. <laughs> look, if y'all been listening to the podcast, right. y'all know we talked about that. Right. I started you got to, you know, when you give them your energy, too. And who right. You, Okay. Right. Well, who, who's going to be left inside your womb mm-hmm. when it... Okay. And look, so times are real. Like... Real. And I... Yes. It's real. I had to do a cord cutting yes. <laughs> on a yes. couple of months. Like, it's real. But I also, at the same time, too, was able to identify, because I was on my spiritual journey, uh-huh. um, who I was meeting. Because you don't meet people by accident. Okay. Nobody. Nobody by accident. And so, a lot of the, the people I was dealing with, again, I had to look within myself and figure out... What am I um, encountering these people for? Mm-hmm. What do I need? And a lot of it, honestly, was was karmic debt. Mm-hmm. You know, I had to pay some stuff back from 2017, hey. 20. Hey, you know, back then when you didn't know better. It's all about balance, though. About balance. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I was like, okay, well, I'm paying this back. Mm-hmm. I'm getting my business going. And so I went to work one Friday. I had always been taking little stuff home. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. look, because at any moment, I'm just going to leave. But mm-hmm. Again, when you feel like you feel obligated to help other people mm-hmm. and, you know, be there for them, mm-hmm. you know, I told myself I, I could never just quit a job. Right. And then that one Friday, I just, I told them that the, bo- the boss had one more time. Because, again, I don't, I don't like disrespect because I'm not a disrespectful person. I never give you know anybody a reason to be. That's. And that's where I am. Mm-hmm. It's like, because if I give you so much respect mm-hmm. and when you're working on loving yourself mm-hmm. and working on treating yourself great, mm-hmm. it is almost like you stepping back and not loving yourself the way you mm-hmm. deserve because you are allowing someone to treat, to treat you. you that way. And that that's interesting because that actually happened to me. Mm-hmm. I actually... Um, told somebody that before i was like you know we're going to continue to work together and they were my new supervisor and i was mm-hmm. like you cannot talk to me that way mm-hmm. i was like that doesn't you know i don't talk to you that way and that wasn't right and 
God was like, okay, that's it. And the next week, they was like, well, they wanted to go in a different direction. And I said, okay. And when I got home, I was like, yes, God. And I knew it, it stemmed from that mm-hmm. because I I talked very stern. Like, listen, like that's not fair to me. I don't talk to you that way. Why do you right. think it's okay for you to talk to me that way? And the person didn't really respond because there was nothing they had to say, but they knew they couldn't talk to me that way. They knew they, I wasn't going to fit into mm-hmm. to the the you know that that box right and i wasn't going to right and so it was a blessing mm-hmm. and doors opened and, and and continued to open and i'm just so i'm just so blessed and grateful so i do know exactly what you're talking mm-hmm. about and god will put you in a place where you feel very uncomfortable mm-hmm. over and over and over again until you move and if yes. you're really listening that's you're going to hear the cry. Right. You're, you're, you're going to hear the command. Right. You're going to hear that law and you're going to move and mm-hmm. you're going to stand up for yourself and whatever happens is because of that. Right. That's so Whether true. it feel uncomfortable or not. Mm-hmm. So, so you got to the point where you basically said, you know, that's it. Yeah. And it's Friday. You pack your bags and what happened? It's Friday. I went around. I was like, okay, well, see y'all later. <laughs> See y'all. Deuces. I, right now. Okay, we'll see y'all Monday. I'm like, mm. you didn't say that. I didn't say bye. I told one person. I told my friend. Um, her name Tiffany Boss, and I was mm-hmm. walking out. I was like, I don't, I don't think I'm coming back. And she was like, Hey, hey, man, if you don't want to do it, don't do it anymore. And I'm like, I right, think about it. I waited all. Wait a minute. Shout out to Tiffany. Hey, Tim. <laughs> You gotta make sure she listens because you got, got a whole to. shout out sister. Yeah, I gotta make sure she know because you know for the first time it was like somebody saying do what you feel like you have to do. Mm. You know, most of the time if you tell somebody, hey, I, I think I want to quit. Nah, man, how you gonna take care of your kids yeah, yeah. and yeah. how you gonna do this? It's Absolutely. like you get every reason why you should stay in this because that's their in- insecurity and right. that's their uncertainty about themselves right. and they're gonna project to you. Right. That's you get all of those reasons. Absolutely. And one thing I learned is that people operate in fear, mm. not faith. Okay. Even people who Come claim on that they Come are on faithful, Come on they don't never operate hey. in faith. <laughs> because if they did, a lot more people would be stepping out uh-huh. and doing things that they want to do. And not only what they want to do, what they're supposed to be doing. Their life something, purpose. Your life purpose. Because mm-hmm. your life purpose is going to help you and, and it's going to help else. a whole lot of other people. Right. Trust and right. believe that. They came with their seeds within them, and they still staying at a nine to five. And I'm not knocking anybody who stays at a nine to five mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, we all got bills. But at the same time, when you project that fear onto your kids, when you project that fear out in the community, like it makes it hard for people to live in within that purpose. And so, hey, y'all, it's hard to live within your purpose. Mm-hmm. And we's on the road. We's on the road. Yes, we are. <laughs> We got to take a quick commercial break, girl. The time is flying by. Is. You were just dropping all these jewels and blessing us with your presence, and I Thank love you. it. And ju- ju- just the energy of who you are. Y'all listen, y'all listen. This is Shanique Marie with Just Be in the Building at 72.9 The Voice, and we will be back. Peace. Drinking your glass. Give me your love.
Welcome back to Ax and Read with the Chronicles of Chocolate Sir with healing your minds, your body, and your soul. And we have just be in the building. And before we left, yes. we were talking about how you found your life purpose mm-hmm. and how um that really transitioned and changed your life. Yes. Right. So let's finish talking about that. Yes. Yeah, so um after figuring out, you know, that a lot of people operate in fear, I wanted to be one of those people who operated in faith, who right. wanted to to you know find a purpose and their passion so i kind of transitioned into being a life guide or um i you know i was able to identify my gifts as a light worker okay um and so we say light worker what exactly is that so a light worker was sent here to help people heal okay um that was my purpose you know you when you gravitate and attract those broken people Mm -hmm. sometimes it isn't because you're always broken sometimes it's because they see light within you that they need within themselves speak and so i was able to identify you know okay that's how I gravitated to teaching um that's how I met a lot of the the men that I met um that's how you know a lot of the friends that I acquired because they seen something within me and and let's go a little deeper Mm -hmm. within that though what I've noticed even when I have my my healing clients I do Mm -hmm. regular and I do you know therapy life coaching Mm -hmm. um I also learn stuff from them too Mm -hmm. people come into our lives for different reasons like you said earlier and so by us being able to deposit within them they deposit within mm-hmm. us even if it's to the point where we are acknowledging the fact that we can help him mm-hmm. help them at, at certain stages of their life and that helps us even become more confident mm-hmm. in what we're here to do mm-hmm. and then you might have a client that drop a jewel that says something about um, generational wealth mm-hmm. you know i mean and yes we have heard that before but a person may say something in a very different way that me we might need to hear at that particular time if that makes mm-hmm. sense what i'm saying mm-hmm. yes. and so um, I make sure I keep my eyes, ears, and spirit open mm-hmm. to everybody that I come in contact with. Because if it's the president of the United States or a bum on a corner, I think we can get a certain type of um, learning and giving from from everybody that mm-hmm. we meet. And so, yeah. So the clients are here to help us as well. Yes. Absolutely. But you already know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know being able to learn from them it also helps you you mm-hmm. know evolve and grow so absolutely as a light worker it's like when you know you meet those people and you mm-hmm. learn certain stuff about yourself you're like oh i can put that in my pocket so but it even goes go deeper you'll notice that the people will change yeah the type of clients that that are coming to you I will change as well yes and because so you can you, use the more tools. you've learned absolutely the more mm-hmm. you learn about yourself and the more that that you you have learned how to give right the type of clients and the type of the type of people that i come in contact with is changing and i'm helping them i just went through a certain situation mm-hmm. then i'll have a client a month later, two weeks later, that's going to the same situation. And you know I went through. Two weeks. Now. Mm-hmm. Yes, because I've went in, I dug deep, and I've done the yes. work, and so I'm able to tell them. And so it's it's amazing. So we really pay attention to what's going on in our lives and mm-hmm. and, and how we are supposed to be light workers right. and how we are supposed to help others heal. We can truly heal ourselves as well. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes so I figured that was my passion. Okay. Through you know through all the spiritual development that I, you know, was getting from um, the business. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I, you know, figured out, okay, well, my purpose is to help others find purpose in their passions, Mm -hmm. to help people heal wholly, Mm -hmm. and to also live unapologetically. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And that, that's your Instagram name too, right? What is it? Yeah, oh, Unapologists. Okay, one of them. at Unapologists. Uh, Spell yes. it out for me. At U-N-A-P-O-L-O underscore Jess. Okay. So yes. let's tell me about that. How... What, what made you come up with that, sis? Um, so for a while, I had a blog called Unapologetic Kinks. And okay. I started kind of back in college. And mm-hmm. I kind of would write on it a little bit and mm-hmm. kind of fall back. And mm-hmm. um, again, through my spiritual journey, it was like, you know what? You have to start living for you. Because okay. a lot of the decisions I made were for other people. Okay. They were for to make parents happy, mm-hmm. to make my you know boyfriend at the time happy, to make friends happy, to make everybody else happy. But then when you sit back and look, you're like, damn, I don't even know what I like. Okay. I don't even know you know where I like to go. What I like to do and so so tell me about tell me about about that day what did that day look like when you just said like okay I don't know who I am what did mm-hmm. that day look like when you come up with unapologetic Jess um unapologetic it just looked like me honestly I would say it came out of a spiritual bath of course but, okay okay <laughs> but okay see see that's yeah. what, I mean we have epiphanies right some people ride down the road you know they're driving right. there their mind is off. Some people write things down. Some people take right. spiritual baths. Some people 
go into meditation for a few days and things drop in the spirit yours was a spiritual bath and it just was like unapologetic okay and i had already kind of been using a tagline live you know unapologetically well at first i was using um the you know my perfectly imperfect journey to self-love oh okay. um when i was doing apologetic kinks and so okay. when i felt like i had arrived to you know self-love it was like okay i don't have to talk about it no more i kind of evolved into an apologist where it's like now i found myself okay now y'all finna get it y'all finna get whoever get you finna get it give it to them give sis. it all up hey all of it. <laughs> family friends whoever i love it and so it was like one of those things where i kind of you know came up with it and right. it was like okay well this is my purpose is to help others heal okay um and i didn't um come up with um a lot of the text, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm a writer mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. um, until later. Because, you know, again, you, keep, you have to keep going through stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was just asking, like, okay, so what am I going to do? Because the blogging thing won't work it out for me. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, I wasn't consistent. Okay. And, again. Different space, though. It, different space. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you... I want consistency out of life. And so it was like one of those things where I had to learn how to be consistent. Mm -hmm. And that's what my first Speak. business taught me. It okay. works. Mm -hmm. So I learned so much from that that I applied into an apologist. Wow. You saw everything lined it up. It aligned up. Yes. And so things for me were just falling into place. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny because... Um, my nail lady actually got me on my spiritual journey. Her name is Nail by MB. Okay. Um, and so she would tell me, like, this is it's all going to align. And before, you, when you're not in tune spiritually, you don't even know what that means. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, what she talking about? Like, all right. Like, but then when it started falling into place, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, ha, oh, see? See? Like, all of those. I told you. Mm -hmm. And, like, everything that I spoke that I wanted, mm -hmm. it started to be to come into mm -hmm. into into fruition, fruition. Mm -hmm. and so that's what kind of happened with unapologetic and it led into the journals okay so so these these journals here yeah these, these journals here um it's, it's called uh, one's called breathe bitch okay yeah. <laughs> yes. and the other one's called breathe boo that's the edit okay the, the edit yes censor yes the censor <laughs> okay so let's talk about these yes. first of all these are absolutely beautiful thank you and let's talk about them here let me just as, as, as you are speaking i'm just gonna you know flip yes. through a little bit yes. yeah so i came up with the idea honestly it came out of nowhere mm -hmm. um like i said i had watched the secret mm -hmm. and um they talked about law of attraction mm -hmm. and the man said that you know he wanted to manifest money in abundance mm -hmm. and so an idea came to him out of nowhere mm -hmm. and so i had to just you know i write all my ideas on my whiteboard and mm -hmm. i'm just like oh, i couldn't get nothing and one day i was driving i was leaving this person's house in early in the morning mm -hmm. and um i was like dang i wonder if this person is gonna call me back because you know you go through those little phases mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. And in my mind, it was like, breathe, bitch. Like, what's for you going to be for you? Speaking. Say it one more time. What's for you going to be for what's you? What's for you? Y'all, let's take, let's take a moment of silence on that. What's for you? <laughs> going to be for you. Going to be for you. And it will arrive at the time it's supposed to arrive. Mm -hmm. And I was just speaking um, with someone the other day. I'm always somewhere talking about something, girl. Okay, yeah. listen. <laughs> and I was like, you know, we get so caught up in trying to hold on to things mm -hmm. at the detriment of ourselves mm -hmm. that we don't even recognize something that's right around a corner is waiting for us and we it's can't waiting. even get that beautiful piece mm -hmm. of whatever it is because we so caught up in what we think we should have we're so caught up in not letting go mm -hmm. of the past we are so caught up in not letting go of ourselves to allow love to come in mm -hmm. because this situation right here wasn't providing us with joy mm -hmm. it wasn't providing us with love it wasn't providing us with peace but when we really let go when they say let go and let god that yeah. is for real and let the godliness within you mm -hmm. shine you know mm -hmm. and i think a lot of times we have such um difficulties is because we try to hold on and the more we hold on it hurts it hurts right. the more we hold on it hurts it hurts like well and then you have to sit back and say well why are we holding on mm -hmm. why are we holding on just like you walked out that out that job mm -hmm. you was like uh-uh we're not doing this mm -hmm. and i deserve better i am better you are unpala yes yes period so what Period. Period. Say what now? Period. <laughs> I love it. And so this book, honey, is yes. absolutely everything. It's absolutely it's, it's colorful. Thank you. Some of my favorite colors. Look, I think all colors are my favorite. But I like purples and blues mm -hmm. and pink. This is very. It will get you inspired to write. It will inspire you to want to 
write down some things about yourself. Right. It would inspire you to kind of just say, like, you know what? Even if I don't feel like writing, just doodle. Just, and, it, right. and it'll get you to start writing. So on mm-hmm. for April, okay, I'm going to read something out of the journal, guys. It says um, April is on like a um, a Stargate type of situation. It's, it's pink and purple and blue. is beautiful. It says you may answer many defeats, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary to encounter the defeats so you can know who you are. What you can rise from and how you can still come out of it by Maya Angelou. Yes. And so not only are the other journals, you know, there to help you, um, love you and give you different things. Um, like, uh, what it basically, what did you learn today? How, how have you grown this week? Mm-hmm. It actually is what it says. And how did you practice self care? It also give you, you know, affirmations. It give yes. you very powerful words to kind of keep you aligned to who you are. And it kind of get stir your soul to get you thinking about some things. Right. So even if you don't even know what to write, right. just, just this will help us. And I'm going to read, um, a couple more cause I usually do, um, a poem okay. um, every week, and I'm gonna read some of your your things in here. I'm not gonna read all of y'all because y'all got to purchase a journal, okay? Yeah. Y'all gonna have to purchase a <laughs> journal, and you're gonna have to um, get it yourself. But um, with that being said, where can they purchase the journal at? So you can purchase it online at my website. Okay. So www.unapologetics.com okay. um, slash shop slash breathe. Okay. Um, that makes it easier for people to find it. Okay. So, okay. okay. Yeah, they can purchase there. Mm-hmm. Um, also, you can reach out on Instagram at unapologetics mm-hmm. or unapolo underscore mm-hmm. Jess. Or either at Jess B underscore fancy. Okay, okay. And you guys, look, she have a, another type of journey too that we're going to discuss when we come back to my commercial break. Yes. Time flies by. Yes. You see, it flies by. And it I is. absolutely love it. 72.9 The Voice. This is Axe Marie with Shanique Marie and Jess B. It's in the building, y'all. We'll be right back. Peace.
Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Yes. <laughs> Shanika Marie is back, y'all. We'll ask Marie and Jess is in the building. And so we were just talking about, about your journals. Yes. I, I was reading um, one of the brilliant um, quotes you had in there. Yeah. Very inspiring. And I was getting ready to talk about moon magic. Yes. And so this one, they can actually, you want them to actually get in contact with you. Yes. Yes. And so how would they go about um, ordering from you? This is um, moon magic. So let's talk about this. All right. So moon magic I came up with because um, I had always felt like a connection to the moon. I always Mm -hmm. felt like in some form or fashion Mm. we were influenced by the different phases Mm -hmm. again before spirituality i never could put my finger on it i never knew what words Mm -hmm. to put towards it but Mm -hmm. you know as i grew and learned the different phases um there are certain times to manifest certain things that you want okay because you have different phases not everything is abundance 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 sometimes Mm -hmm. you have to plan sometimes you have to prepare sometimes you have to surrender a lot of the stuff that you was carrying from previous experience experiences before um asking for whatever it is that you want to ask for now Mm -hmm. because you can't be constantly asking universe and god and you know asking for stuff when you have to do some internal work i mean so i came up with the journal moon magic to help be a guide to people who are kind of just starting off um with their journey because i know what i needed at the time Mm -hmm. and so um i created this to help you know beginners but also help people who also use the moon to influence their different um, phases of manifesting. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as a guide to help them be strategic in their manifesting. Mm-hmm. And not just, you know, just out here, oh, I want this, I want that. Okay, so let's even talk about, let's even talk about that. Because mm-hmm. uh, some of my listeners may not even know what moon magic is. And let me say yes. briefly, as I was doing some healing work, um, actually about four days ago. Mm-hmm. And... The sister, she's not really f- familiar with moon magic, but mm. we were discussing how someone was saying that they thought astrology was bad. Mm. And she's, this girl was like the top of her class in school. Mm. And so this is what she broke down to me, which I thought was very interesting. She said, how can astrology be bad when it's the same thing that they tell us that governs everything that they do? Like mm-hmm. the farmers. She said... Uh, even with our cycles and she's mm-hmm. like so i'm not understanding um how is astrology bad when i've been reading astrology for years she said and it and is is very right and exact mm-hmm. she's a christian she said it's very right and exact and she said and that's interesting to me mm-hmm. and i was like mm, very well said and so even if you like to read just a little bit or mm-hmm. even if you are you know interested in learning about who you are and almost challenging what people say Mm -hmm. because everything you see which is changing now because the internet is so big and everybody Mm -hmm. calling everybody a bunch of heathens you're going to you're going to hell hell. you know but (laughs) if you look back and see what our ancestors used to Mm -hmm. do and the moves they used to make you will find out a lot of the things was done around the moon around the moon and our psychers are synced to the moon because of that Mm -hmm. in the different ways we feel and, and and the type of um energetic we energetic pulls we have during the mm-hmm. month and the, and the type of ways we feel like when we get up in the morning is mm-hmm. because of the earth mm-hmm. and our direct connection to the moon mm-hmm. stop it but i just wanted to, to say that real mm-hmm. quickly but back, so back to that the yes. moon magic let's so you're talking to a beginner yeah. about the move i, I kind of gave a little foundational but what would you say to someone so to, to open their eyes up to maybe want to mm. say they want the a moon magic journal what would you say i would say get it i mean <laughs> get it but, get but why it. though um i would say because it the way that i break down the different phases mm-hmm. and i give you um actual um sentence starters mm-hmm. to help you to help guide you throughout the different um phases of what you're asking for like i ask you what phase are you trying to manifest in? But also, what are your intentions for this phase? But why would they? Why would they use the moon anyway? Let, let, let's go foundational, foundational. Ba- ba- baby steps now. Right, because again, the moon influences so much of what happens in your life. Okay, now, right? It mani- like it. It influences 
even down to your your emotions and your feelings. Mm-hmm. If you notice during a full moon, people act crazy. Yeah. Like the, like there are more people who act uh, like a plum fool during a full moon, and so you know people notice that though. But then, Absolutely. but then when you say, Absolutely. hey, well, you know, doing a new moon is time to retreat, time to surrender, time to kind of go within and dig deep and figure out what it is that you want to manifest for the next phase. For new beginnings. For, mm-hmm. for new beginnings. Mm-hmm. Then you're crazy. Mm-hmm. Then you don't, oh, no. Like, what she talk? What oh, she there talking? she go. She going to hell. Like, right. Calm down. So listen. Right. right. And that's what I wanted to, to kind of, mm-hmm. you know, talk about because people don't understand how it directly affects Effect. everything Just that, like fall, that, that we do. Winter, spring summer Mm -hmm. all of our lives um are interconnected through the source okay okay like every part of what we experience is through god okay even when it comes to crystals Mm -hmm. when it comes to the rain when it comes to all of this stuff that i feel like spiritual people are in tune with Mm -hmm. it's because we know that we are all interconnected Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. and that the moon connects us all still Mm -hmm. and so you know being able to use the moon one of the the gifts we were given mm-hmm. from God okay. um, to manifest the things, our abundance and what we want. Mm-hmm. Also, you can manifest forgiveness. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that I, again, work with mm-hmm. with the previous. Okay. So that's like as, I talked about as a little example. Mm-hmm. What would be the best time to work on forgiveness? Forgiveness. That is honestly during a new moon. Mm-hmm. That's like one of those because that's when you're supposed to be still, supposed mm-hmm. to be calm, mm-hmm. and you're supposed to reflect. Mm-hmm. And what about the full moon too? Because the full, the full moon is about release. Mm-hmm. So, and so maybe moon, releasing um, stagnant energy that keep you from keep forgiving. keep you from forgiveness. Yes. Okay, so to both of them. So that. you can actually mm-hmm. do forgiveness all month, but you just got to make sure you set the intention. And be intentional. And mm-hmm. during a full moon, I like to do like a little, um, I write down what I want to release. Okay. Um, and then I fold it away. And that will be unforgiveness, you, you mm-hmm. would say. Fold it, yep. Right. Fold it away, and then I would burn it. Okay. To release. Because now I know what I'm working towards. Okay. And then um, whatever didn't happen in between that full moon and the next new moon, you let that go because you can't take that energy into your next level. Okay. Right. So that's kind of what I wanted to help other people with when they start because you know again when you begin it's like you don't know where to start you inboxing everybody what do i do mm-hmm. what books do i buy and so i kind of just created like an outline or a guide yeah, to kind of help with that and it, it is and it's very it's very in depth actually thank you it really is it, it's absolutely beautiful it says the moon is a reminder that no matter what phase i'm in i am still whole and this is in in the actual journal let me repeat that. The moon is a reminder that no matter what phase I am in, I am still hold. Um, I'm going to read something else. The moon have has always had an influence on our behaviors, whether we want to believe it or not. Your mood, your characteristics, and perceptions are all swayed by the moon's energy. When beginning your spiritual journey, some of the first things learned are the moon phases. I'm sure you remember learning about the moon phases before as a child. But we're not taught what spiritual work to do during each phase. Like the moon, our life works in cycles and this journal intentions are to help you set clear intentions during each cycle. And so that is at the very beginning of this journal. So if you are, for me, um, she said this is for beginners, but I would actually utilize this too. I think it's for beginners and it's for anyone that actually wants to actually journal Mm -hmm. what they're trying to do and have a place where they can actually put stuff down. So this is for anyone. This is absolutely perfect because I would use this and I've been doing, you know, um, stuff under the moon for a while and i'm a cancer honey you know yeah, cancer's all, all, all the moon me too right okay we, we are. are the moon right. <laughs> oh are. and that's maybe why you got the moon back maybe it's why yeah. you're so in tune with it yes absolutely they go i just like a lot of it i love it <laughs> and and where would they get this actually so how could they contact you with this where yes. would you want them to contact you they back? can contact me at <laughs> at instagram so at just be underscore fancy or at an Apollo underscore Jess. Okay. Okay. Wow. They'll just inbox you. Yes. Okay. Box yes. Because both of these. Wow. So when I say I have some sisters in the building that's making moves yes. and doing things. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. 
Yes, I'm here changing the world and working on yourself in the process. Because yeah. once we think we get to a certain place, it's always another yeah. place. Go uh-huh. ahead, another awakening. Oh, <laughs> all over again. I just went through something. Right. Mm. And you know, don't get it, don't get it twisted. The awakenings right. and and the journeys and everything is not bad, mm-hmm. but it's also about you know foundationally is allowing, mm-hmm. allowing things transition, mm-hmm. allowing to ask. What step do I take? Allowing to be um, centered and grounded and open and receptive and ready. And so when you say that, okay, okay, most high, my angels, the ancestors, I'm ready. ready. When right. stuff start happening, you be like, whoo, you can't be mad about right. it. Right. You, right. you, you cannot be mad about it. Because that's what we ask for. That's what, that's what we ask for. And ask that's what we've been prepared for. Come on now. Mm-hmm. Come on now. All them situations and stuff that we would look back and say, "Why me?" Mm-hmm. That was why because you were being prepared for mm-hmm. whatever for the next it is, step, for the next, for level. the next journey, right? Mm. And so she said, hashtag level up. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Sierra. <laughs> that song has so many different meanings for me. Mm-hmm. And the song is so ener- energetic. And she just dope. She just dope. Mm-hmm. And so, y'all, it's almost time for us to exit the building. So I was going to kind of read some stuff. So one thing she had in here. She said, a lot of things to prove. I have a lot of things to prove to myself. Mm-hmm. One is that I can live my life fearlessly and you know the sister was just talking about how she was not going to let fear engulf her Mm -hmm. she was not going to let fear overtake her and she didn't and that's why she's here with these beautiful journals and working on other projects and doing well in its works and have people under her that she shot out on her facebook page i've seen the sister and i think it's very motivational because you inspire them thank you yes and this one is by susan taylor in every crisis there is a message Crisis are nature's way of forcing change, breaking down old structures, shaking loose negative habits so that something new and better can take their place. And we were just talking about Mm -hmm. how change is inevitable, Mm -hmm. is important, and it rises the frequency within ourselves if we allow it. Right. With that being said, y'all listen. It is another tantalizing Tuesday with your girl Shanika Marie with Jess B yeah. in the building with seven two point nine the voice. I love you guys. Be safe. Wash your hands. Meditate. Keep your frequency high and know that you are love, 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 love. Know that you are love because you are everything and you are nothing. <laughs> Have a beautiful night. Peace. What you gonna say to the say to the people, Jess? Thank you for (laughs) (laughs) me. You're welcome, guys. Y'all have a good night.